my name is Tori Evans, and this is the LE Press, short for Low Temperature Polyethylene Press. It and all of its variants enable me to recycle on my own at home. The premise is simple. It's a collection of metal plates, a lot like a flower press, that are spring-loaded so that you can clamp down the plastic that you're working on, place it into an oven, heat it up to melting temperature. It will then flatten, and, and, and this is the great part, it keeps it under pressure. Um, if you've been around YouTube, you've probably seen people recycling like HDPE and other plastics. Um, HDPE is a really great plastic to get into home recycling because uh, it melts at a really low temperature and it doesn't release any fumes. Uh, that's actually why I named this the Low Temperature Polyethylene Press. Because um, I started, um, like, a long time ago I saw uh, Atomic Shrimp's videos on using a panini press and then Art of Weapons and his uh, video where, you know, he would heat up the plastic in an oven and then put it into a giant hydraulic press. But not everybody has a, you know, hydraulic press to press to put the plastic under tons of pressure in order to get like a flat, workable sheet of material. But for this, with this method, relatively cheaply, I can create super thin, yet strong and sturdy, workable material out of junk plastic. This was made from grocery bags. This was milk jugs. It's a strong material. Look how flat that is. There's a few voids and bubbles in there, but the results are amazing. Um, one of the difficult things uh, to work on with HDPE is that you don't have a whole lot of time, but you need to keep it under pressure. It warps a ton. Um, so what the press does is it keeps it under pressure while it's heated so you get much better results. Also, just makes the whole process easier. One of the greatest things about my methods and this device is that I've completely eliminated shredding. I just don't do it. And that's one of the biggest things holding people back from getting into at-home recycling. Like, shredding is time-consuming, and it's the most, honestly, I think it's probably one of the most expensive machines you can get. There's extruders and, um, you know, machines out there that you can get that will recycle plastic, but you need to shred the plastic in order to use those machines. Well, this press and these methods that I'm going to be showing on this channel kind of upend the whole process to where I don't even need to. I instead make ingots. Um, one thing that I've been doing lately is I've been using silicone bags. Uh, I'm a nice big one here that I got online to make PLA ingots. These used to be recycled 3D prints. And then I could take these ingots, place them inside the press, clamp them down, and make things using molds. Got a couple molds here. Like here's, uh, this is a acrylic clay mold. Uh, it's made for making jewelry, but it's awesome for recycling little plastic widgets. And actually, I've, I've got some here clamped up that we're going to pull out and see what they look like. Uh, but there's other things this can do too. Um, it doesn't just do HDPE. Uh, I've also have been flattening 3D filament spools into flat, use reusable, CNC-able plastic. Look at that. That was a filament spool. <laughs> been looking for something to do with these, well, here you go. I've got one in here. Um, so something I've learned with the big version of the machine is there's a level of diminishing returns. You could make one bigger than this to handle more plastic, but you end up 
running into more and more difficulty the more mass you try to mess with. But I have found that this version is excellent at flattening a 3D filament spool into a flat usable sheet of plastic. Um, a lot of these tend to be unmarked, so you do have to deal with fumes, um, but I kind of recommend that you use an outdoor oven for all of this anyway. Um, uh, so yeah, so uh, this one right here is just a sentimental prototype. Um, it wasn't the first one, but it was the first one that really like turned into a workhorse. Uh, it's a bit over-engineered, used conduit plates, uh, because you can get these for about a buck, a buck fifty, um, at the hardware store. Everything here, just about everything here, with I think the exception of these dollar store clamps, you can get at a hardware store. In fact, most of it is at Home Depot. Um, uh, I'll try to get the numbers of all the products uh, in the description or whatnot. But, uh, I'm going to have a whole separate video on how to build these, and then this whole channel is just going to be devoted to how to use them. This is just like kind of basic introduction. Uh, sorry if I'm a little scatterbrained. I've been trying to make this video for years. You don't want to know how many takes I've done, so <laughs> bear with me. Bear with me. Anyway, so that's just a sentimental favorite. Um, uh, here is a newer version, uh, but I've been... These were using metal plates that aren't available to the public. They were just like some trash plates that I got a hold of. Um, uh, these really tall springs were cut in half. But this version I'm really, really happy with. This is the LE Press EZ. Everything here can be bought at Home Depot for about $15. Prices have been going up lately, so. Um, but it's definitely going to be less than 20 bucks, and it doesn't require any tools. It's a little lighter duty, but you can take, you know, um, your pieces of plastic and these really small fondant molds, and for $15 and a mold, you can get started making plastic jewelry. Um, hopefully I'll be able to show off a lot of the stuff that I've made. <laughs> I've been doing this for years, and I have a lot of... I, uh, I do a lot. I do a lot. <laughs> anyway, let's take one of these. Where? Uh, oh, uh, about the 3D printing plastic, I forgot. Uh, I'm still figuring it out. <laughs> it's very light temperatures. I'll just. Uh, We'll worry about that one later. Don't want to overload them. Anyway, let's crack one of these open. So I started off using wig nuts because it was the easiest, but I have since found that since I don't really need as much pressure, um, I think I was trying to melt too much plastic. Um, I don't really have a lot of restraint. <laughs> <laughs> tend to push things to their limit. Um, if you take a lighter hand um, and you, you can use softer, gentler springs, and then you can just use clamps to spring load by hand. It's much faster. Uh, but anyway, or sometimes you do need a bit more pressure, and wing nuts are a great option. Let's just take this apart. Stick uh, baking sheets. They come, there's like a copper silicone infused barbecue baking sheet, which are really cheap. Do not pay $10 for two of these. They are way cheaper than that. 
Silicone is like super overpriced. You can also use uh, baking sheet, baking silicone as well. They work fantastic. Um, although, uh, I usually tend to stick with uh, 16 gauge spring steel. Um, so, it depends on the plastic, but some of them uh, will pop off and you don't really need the silicone, but it makes your life a lot easier. Again, this is all something I'm going to go into detail. I kind of I have my own way of classifying plastics, and everything has a methodology to it. But ah, there we go. So uh, there's my silicone molds, and what I really love about these is they pop right out. So have you ever heard of a deconstructed sandwich? A deconstructed sandwich is like all the same parts of a sandwich. You've got the bread, tomato, lettuce, and meat. But it's put together differently. Like it's maybe you'll just be a different, like a piece of bread in the bottom with the meat and then the lettuce and tomato stacked on top like a, a pizza or something. At least I think so. I, I'm not a cook. Well, this is deconstructed Decon, deconstructed, deconstructed injection molding. Ugh. Oh my God! We're keeping this tape. I'm, I'm keep, I'm doing this video. I'm doing it if it kills me. Okay. <laughs> All right. But here we go. We have uh, pieces of um, circles. Okay. So, what is this? So, um, this was like a wad of old plastic. Um, that I put into the device, clamped it down, said all this already. Anyway, uh, yeah, you pop out uh, the molds and you can make circles. And using this, you can make a whole bunch. And then eventually, chains and giant chain mail. This is a set of chain mail that I'm working on made entirely out of milk jugs. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, and this mold, uh, this is a fondant mold. It is the letter O. It's a capital letter O for cakes. I think I got these at Michael's or something. Anyway, uh, yeah, fondant molds. Uh, these, this long chain is the letter zero. Fondant molds are great. Here, let me plot some of the molds that I've done things with. Uh, I make jewelry, we'll show that off later. Uh, so fondant molds are really great because they're flat on the bottom. Um, you kind of press the fondant into it, and that's also what we do with the plastic. So, and it's a tough silicone. Um, so it lends itself really well to recycling plastic. Um, it's also all sorts of things. I'm experimenting with making D&D stuff with this cobblestone and wood that was made for cakes. And there we go, we've got some plastic wood, and then we've got like some fake cobblestone. Anyway. Huh. Uh, what was, oh yeah. You can also make your own mold. This is one that I'm working on. God, I wish this was a commercial product. Um, so this is a one inch grid for making flat sheets of pre-gridded plastic. Why would you want pre-gridded plastic? Well, you know, if every material that we have, like wood and whatever else we're going to use, um, came pre-scored to where you could just snap it to size, I'll bet you that's exactly how it would come. But we don't do that because that's a lot of work. Well, since we're melting this anyway, we might as well snap it into a nice, easy, convenient shape. Three inches by two inches. Boom. It can also be used with interesting color patterns to make interesting designs. I'm hoping to make like some D&D some &D tiles maybe one day. Um, it's work in progress. Uh, but 
I can all, I'm also hoping that maybe they can be remelted and turned into a giant perler, you know, a giant, uh, imagine making a giant Mega Man out of trash, that'd be, that'd be really cool, but, uh, this, uh, is falling apart, is degrading, I'm not too good with silicone, I'm still learning that, so we'll get that figured out. Um, oh, uh, I'm just going to show how to load one, um, that's pretty simple. You get the idea. Um, yeah, metal plates. You have your non-stick surface. Uh, we'll throw down a mold. Throw down a mold. And then, <laughs> I love this. Uh, usually an old wad of plastic. You can just go right back in. But, uh, you know, you Take your properly sized, oh, that's way too big, but take your wad of plastic, uh, another metal plate, non stick, slide it in. You get the idea. Oh, that's right, I was going to talk about the springs. Uh, you know what, we'll do that in another video. Um, I've, I've gotten this far and I'm not, I'm not deleting this video. <laughs> I, I have I have honestly been trying to make this video for years. It is a mess. Um, I don't know. Stick with me here. Um, it's not everything, uh, but uh, yeah. Anyway, so uh, yeah, that's that's my really cool device. Uh, uh, hopefully we can uh, stick around and uh, check out, see all this cool stuff that you can do with it. Uh, recycling's a lie.